Welcome to Job Skills Share. This is a very quick real world scenario of deploying uh, semantic um, antivirus to computers on the network. But before that, you need to create a package. So let's create that. And this video is for learners. If you are, if you want to basically learn these uh, skills that I, the way I'm teaching, make sure you take the help desk course. I do have the antivirus section in the security and another course is transition from help desk to system admin it's also inside jobskillshare.org so let's go ahead and create a package so this is your server it tells you that you have 384 computers that's connected right now it's actually more than that we need to fix this there these are offline these are out uh, out of date two of them and uh, some basic information to create a package to deploy it to the computers in your network what you need to do on the right side of this page you need to just click on let me make this it click on install protection client <coughs> sorry about that I just break my fast and kind of catching up with my breath so what you have to do is um, to create a new package you need to click on new package deployment right here um, and then basically what you need to do is to click on next and what you would like to do is make sure that you get all the protection that's available uh, and you will just click this it tells you that this will install um, you know a lot of things install all content in client installation package this option provide maximum protection include virus definition in the installation package so what it does it will give you like a definition in this also so then when you deploy it to the machine they'll have the latest um, um, definition so that's pretty good because then if you have something going on like after installation it's not connecting to the server so maybe this is a good way to do it you can also specify group where it needs to go so if your company has decided that some computers needs to go to 32 bit some needs to go to 64 bit you can do it from here it tells you this selection includes 64 bit and 32 bit so when you click on next what's going to happen is that basically it will start creating a package and one, once it's finished with the package, it will give you a zip uh, file. And that zip file could be around 900 MB, 600 MB. And then you will unzip that file. So here, when I unzip the file, I get 32-bit and 64-bit. When I double-click on, let's say, for example, 32-bit, this is the full installation right here. I can go to that computer with the USB and run it, and it will install my cementing. But you can also use... Uh, PDQ deploy which is another software deployment tool and that's something also we discussed in the course if you want to learn about that there's a section software deployment you can basically put that in your software deployment tool and it will deploy it without you going to that computer imagine if you have 300 computers you can just put this in there and click on next and everything will be done in 30 minutes you'll have everything installed on the machines outside of the, your inside your network sorry and you can, like I said, take it to your USB. If sometimes you might have to work on a computer separately, so you can install uh, this on a computer this way, taking this to a USB. You can also use a semantic uh, uh, protection manager to deploy this. But um, I found PDQ very easy to deploy this stuff in a very quick way. Um, the semantic protection manager is good, but it is not fast as PDQ. And deploying on the PDQ is super simple. So if I right click right here, I can just do deploy with PDQ and then it will open up in PDQ. If you want to install this silently uh, on the machine without uh, a user noticing anything, uh, you can basically click on the custom option right here. And once you have that on, you can just space slash s so this is this basically install it um even if a user is working on their computer you, they will not see the installation at the end they might see the installation where it says restart your machine for effects it takes so they might get that message that's okay once you do that and you click on deploy and you pick the computer name after that it will basically put it on that computer one thing you will notice after five six minutes you will see this failed right here uh, you can fix that but even if you go to the computer where you deploy this it's actually installed 
but that computer did not rest restart it so that's why the package aired out but if you go to the computer everything is installed when you use that exe package on pdq you might get this but again you get this message you know that it's actually working uh, and you can confirm it by going to the computer and seeing it uh, yourself that everything is connected now let's take a second and let's talk about some of the real world scenarios that could be related to semantic antivirus server now this was a really easy one that we just talked about and we went through some of the steps but most of the time if you're a system admin you might be working on something like for example if you have machines that are not con getting connection maybe these computer there are like 50 60 more computers but they never got to the total endpoint meaning there are 50 machines without antivirus so for that to find out you need to have uh, some good tools like Spiceworks is a great tool if you have Spiceworks installed and that's also in our course it's an inventory system basically it looks around uh, your network and find out um, uh, devices and then it gives you information so in your Spiceworks let's say if your all desktops are about 400 or 450 machines then you know that you have a missing machines right here that maybe somehow they did not connect it did not look the discovery did not work uh, or maybe it's missed so what you can do is basically you can get the total number from this right here and then you can to get the total number from Spiceworks and match it together in Excel and whatever you have you you have this in your Excel you just delete that and the remaining ones these are the machine that you just can put it in your PDQ and get the package and deploy it to those machines make sure they're on turned on so that's a that's a good that will be a, a good project to work on uh, Spiceworks and uh, Semantic at the same time you can see how you can take advantage of these numbers and the Spiceworks numbers so but imagine if you don't have these type of tools like Spiceworks what you need to do is basically you will get these lists okay but then you need to go to your Active Directory finding out what machines are there that's missing going to each each machine making sure that you install on it it's a lot of manual work so uh, this is where things can get tricky that's why I say that you know always try to use Spiceworks and then try to see how can you utilize it with other systems like this um, sometimes what you will do is you probably have like a let's say for example an older version running 8.1 something and you need to put it on 8.6 then this is again where you need to do a lot of inventory get the list and put it in PDQ and deploy it to all those 400 computers and you'll have everything done in 30 minutes sometimes you might be working on policies so you when you click on the policies right here you can see it have firewall intrusion prevention application and device control host integrity and uh, some of the other things but uh, the most important one is firewall that needs to be configured and um, then you have intrusion prevention that's if you have any like scanning attacks or anything like that on your computer uh, you can protect it through here and then application and device control is like what kind of things can you control on um, when you have an endpoint like you know the antivirus installed on those machines can you protect like USB plugging uh, auto runs and stuff like that you can even protect paths in there for crypto locker kind of things you can just put that same thing like a group policy you can actually do things from here also to edit policies you just need to click on it right click here and then click on edit as you can see when I click on application control I get block application from running AC, block application from running removable devices and this is the things that basically you can do with this. You can click on device control and you can click add here and you can add these type of things like USB, floppy, tips, CD drives, imaging devices and so on. For intrusion prevention you can basically create your own list in here now this would be very useful when you have Spiceworks running it has nmap and it scans computers right so that could trigger some of the things on your uh, antivirus like you know oh something is attacking this computer so you can get the IP address where the Spiceworks is installed and you can put it right here click on here you will add it to this area right here intrusion prevention and then it will stop and you can run your Spiceworks uh, clean firewall so if you click on edit and you can I won't play around too much with firewall rules because they're really 
uh, you know, you need to have a lot of experience to kind of know what exactly these rules are because you could probably block an, uh, a legit application that's doing something for like credit card or some processing or some Office 365 kind of thing, emailing. You probably block that without knowing what you're doing. So make sure you know what you're doing when you change from default to uh, whatever rules you want to put in here. Uh, I remember we were working one day on a, some type of recording from phone for Cisco phones and we changed something over here and after that the recording stopped working and we came back and found out that it was checked by someone. We unchecked it and everything started working again. So this is kind of like the calls you could get you as a, from a help desk point of view, you're mostly coming here and deploying uh, the antivirus client, getting the packages and doing that kind of stuff. From a system admin point of view, you're doing a lot of other, like for example, these type of options and reporting and troubleshooting. So hopefully you guys learned something about semantic server and almost all of the antivirus servers are kind of the same. You know, they have similar type of, um, you know, features. So if you learn one, uh, I'm sure you will have a very uh, easy way to get, get around the other ones too. Thank you for watching this. Make sure you guys thumbs up the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel and be a part of our beautiful community around 13,000 members, more than 13,000, almost 14,000 now. Uh, and they're taking these courses and they're helping us at the same time. Thank you.